Uh, welcome to the uh, University Community Forum. We're pleased today to have uh, Rodette Loomis uh, talk to us. And his title is Trump 2016 Elections. <laughs> We've known Rodette for, for many years, and he's informed us about quite a few elections. He uh, received his PhD at the University of Wisconsin and uh, became a professor of political science at uh, KU in 1979. Okay. Uh, I also found out that this year he's starting phased retirement and uh, he's also planning with his wife uh, for a marvelous trip to Italy and leaving in just a, a couple of weeks. So we wish him well on uh, the, the, that excursion. It, 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 it's always a pleasure to hear that talk, and I remember four years ago when uh, Obama was running for re-election. At the end of the talk, I, I asked, do, do you think Hillary will run four years from now? And he said, you better bet your boots that she will. <laughs> well, uh, he, he, he will give us some interesting remarks about this, uh, uh, perhaps uh, somewhat remarkable election year. Uh, uh, thanks, thank, thanks very much. Um, I got to say that I, I, I started, I've been thinking about this talk for a while and I've got a couple others to give uh, before I leave for Italy. I, I, I am going to Italy for two and a half weeks during the, the campaign. I'll probably you know, maintain my sanity, uh, but um, you know, I thought, okay, I'm, I, I, I've done this before, I can do it, uh, so I had a bunch of material together, and I started putting the darn thing together, and I mean, not that it was that hard, it wasn't, it was, it, but it, was not, it wasn't from a lack of material. Uh, it, it was from an overabundance of material, uh, and not just regular material. I think we've been bom bombarded with polling data, uh, with demographic trends, you, you know, you name it all, and I will get to talking about that. But we've also uh, been uh, host to all kinds of other interpretations, which I'll talk about some, mostly focusing on, on Donald Trump. Uh, you know, I, I think it's, for someone as well known as Hillary Clinton, uh, so you've got uh, Donald Trump, the, uh, I just love this picture, by the way. I mean, it's, you know, yeah, yeah, it's, a, it's right out of Citizen Kane. Or, uh, or, or all the king's men uh, it is, you know, yeah, I think that, you know, yeah, that's the way Trump thinks of himself. Uh, so, you know, what, what's happened is that Hillary Clinton has been reverted to a, a co-starring role. Here's someone who's as well known as any politician uh, in the world, probably, uh, maybe save them for Obama, maybe Putin, whatever, but, but everybody knows who Hillary Clinton is, of course. Uh, and she's not a secondary player, necessarily, uh, but she's, she hasn't got the leading role. The leading role is clearly uh, Donald Trump. Uh, and um, uh, it, I think that is the, the fascinating part of, of, of this election, uh, the interesting part, uh, uh, and, and, the, and the scary part. Uh, you know, I, I was think, coming over here, I was, I was thinking about how I'm regarding this election, and, and um, you know, I have, a, you know, as, as a spectator, it's fascinating. You, got, you never know. You open the paper, or you get your email or Facebook or whatever, and you just don't know what's going to pop up. Like today, for example, Trump's supposed to release his health documents on the Dr. Oz show. <laughs> now, you couldn't make that up, but it turns out he's not going to do it. He's not, not going to re re uh, release it, his uh, documents, but he will, uh, uh, without any question, bash Hillary for not releasing hers. 
it's a, so, so a, a spectator sport, it has been truly fascinating, and it continues to be. Uh, as a political scientist, as I talk about in, in a few minutes, it's, it's been very interesting. Uh, there are a whole bunch of things going on. Um, in some sense, we're having a natural experiment or an unnatural experiment uh, with, with, with Trump. Um, as a citizen, I'm scared to death. I mean, the idea that this guy uh, could be elected, and there's, say, a 20% chance, let's say a 25% chance, 20%, 15%, say there's a 2% chance. Uh, I'm still scared. I mean, uh, somebody does win the lottery, of course. Uh, so, I, as a citizen, I, I'm, I, I am unnerved by this, and, and I think, you know, most, not all people, most, you know, clearly there are a big chunk of people who are, are not unnerved by it. But, um, so, uh, that's the background, that, that it's, that it's, uh, you have this wealth of material, it's unconventional material, so, uh, we're talking about something that's, that, that's unprecedented, um, uh, in, in, in terms of uh, a candidate, uh, you might go back to Wendell Wilkie uh, in 1940, uh, but Wilkie was a relatively liberal Republican somewhere in the middle of the political um, uh, uh, range. It's hard to classify Trump. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, and, and so you know, he's not on a traditional ideological as a, a spectrum. And I think that's you know, one of the problems a lot of Republicans have, is, is that he's not. Um, certainly the rhetoric of this election, uh, things get said, and again, often by Trump and his supporters, that would be utterly disqualifying yeah. in another election. And we'll talk a, a little more about that. Uh, the parties, uh, you know, are they really in flux? The Democratic Party seems pretty much normal. Here. A coalition of groups. You try to get, a, you know, African Americans, Hispanics, Asians, uh, college-educated women, on and on out. The Republican Party uh, really doesn't know what what to make of Donald Trump. More or less, it's rallying around him, um, but we don't know exactly. Uh, and, and certainly, many Republicans. There's headlines, uh, just fascinating headlines. Trump closing gap. Republicans now worry he may win. <laughs> <laughs> what world is that? Seriously. Uh, the truth. Uh, you know, uh, George Washington, I cannot tell a lie. Honest A. Now, there were politicians. You know, I'm not sure Washington always told the truth. Uh, there's a, there's a myth. Uh, uh, Abe Lincoln was a politician. Um, and, and certainly as he handled the Civil War, uh, he had agendas that were not always uh, forth, forthcoming. But by and large, we've had a sense that when you outright lie, that's a problem. Um, apparently not. <laughs> so, and finally, I mean, we really do have two historically unpopular candidates uh, by any, any metric. Uh, Trump is very unpopular, Clinton almost equally unpopular. Um, and honestly, I, uh, I mean, and I'm, a, I'm a Democrat, I'm a moderate liberal, liberal Democrat, I'm perfectly at home with Hillary's positions. Um, I've never really understood the, the dislike of, of, of Hillary. Uh, I, I understand, you know, she's secretive, the Clintons feel they don't have to play by the same rules. Uh, but somehow, you know, Bill Clinton remains quite popular. Hillary, uh, as she says, is not a natural politician. But, but what's, again, what's remarkable is that both parties have nominated someone who is quite unpopular. You know, you'd think the goal would be, just offhand, to nominate someone who's popular. I mean, I'm just saying. Uh, so, uh, a, different, uh, a different election. So, I want to use three lenses to, to look at this campaign, and there are many more. Uh, that's one of the things that Trump's, Trump does bring to the campaign. Uh, you can look at this campaign in a lot of different ways. Uh, the first is uh, the campaign as, as more or less performance art. Uh, and I, I think there's, a, there's 
a lot to be learned there uh, by, by, by looking at it as a performance. So I don't think it's the only way to look at it, obviously, but, but um, um, as someone who's taught fiction and film and politics, uh, uh, the, the, the Trump uh, campaign uh, is uh, a, a truly remarkable, and, and uh, there are some precedents in fiction, not, not necessarily in fact, but in fiction here, I want to talk just briefly about, about those. But honestly, I, I would say that, that uh, if you brought someone a screenplay of, of the Donald Trump ascendancy to uh, the Republican nomination and coming close in the polls to winning the election uh, less than two months out, um, most people would say, well, you know, how are we going to play this? Uh, right. We can't play it as a serious drama, so it's either a horror story or a comedy. Uh, <laughs> secondly, there's a cottage industry, or more than a cottage industry, in understanding Trump. How do you, what frame of analysis do you use to understand Donald, Donald Trump? Uh, so I want to talk about that briefly. And again, that, uh, that's part of the problem in dealing with this election. Uh, you have to become you know, a psychoanalyst uh, or a, a business analyst or whatever to uh, think through Donald Trump. Not, it's not just your garden variety uh, political analysis. You know, Romney, Obama. I mean, you know, most of us can do that in our sleep. Uh, not, that it, not that it wasn't interesting, and Obama and to an extent Romney weren't worthy people to, 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 to analyze, but pretty straightforward. Uh, Trump and Clinton, uh, you know, di a different campaign. And again, mostly because of, but not solely because of Trump. And then finally, I'll, I'll provide, you know, a more standard analysis of, you know, where we are, what, what, where we might be going, uh, et cetera, uh, and, 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 and so forth. Um, so, uh, let's start. Uh, with with Donald Trump, um, if you want, uh, if you if you want insight on Donald Trump and have a spare two hours, rent a face in the crowd. Mm. Find it on Netflix. Uh, Andy Griffith, 19, what, 1957, uh, very young Andy Griffith, uh, before, before he went to Mayberry. Um, brilliant performance, fantastic. And other people, Walter Matthau, uh, Patricia O'Neill, a spectacular uh, movie. Uh, not especially well reviewed when it came out, in retrospect, it's seen as, as a classic. Ilya Kazan is, 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 is the director. And um, it's a story about this hick who is uh, given his own radio show and becomes a national phenomena before crashing and, and burning, uh, but by the end becomes uh, reasonably political, uh, at first in the, in the service of a bunch of rich white guys, uh, and then on, in, on his own. And uh, in the end, he's, he's ruined by his, his own cynicism, his own, uh, his own, his own, his own ego. It, it's really a great movie, and the fact that it was done in 1957 uh, is, is remarkable. I just put in a plug that Lawrence Arts Center is going to show a bunch of films this uh, in October, November. Uh, I'm going to introduce a film. I think they're going to show a face in the crowd. They're also going to show The Candidate with Robert Redford, 1970. Uh, holds up extremely well. I, I, and uh, they're also going to show the documentary Wiener about Anthony Wiener, uh, which I have not seen, but everybody's given it fantastic reviews. It's one of those things you go, oh my God, you know, right. why did he let this happen? You know, but he's obviously not in control of himself, so. Uh, anyway, uh, the second movie is. is uh, Again, uh, one from an, an outsider who comes in and disrupts things, builds, uh, 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 and, and eventually is destroyed by, by his, his, own, uh, his own ego, his own aspirations, his own actions. Uh, and, and that's Willie Stark in uh, All the King's Men. Broderick Crawford won an Oscar for, for that performance. You see it now, uh, the 57 movie, All the King, uh, Facing the Crowd, really holds up well. 
all the King's Men is okay. It won an Academy Award. It, it's a good movie. Uh, the book is better, uh, although it's very long and, and flowery. It, it's still, it's still, uh, it's it, 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 it's still, it, it's still better. But but uh, I'm I'm a big fan of all the King's Men. Do not watch the 2006 <laughs> version. Of, of of all the King's Men, uh, which is one of the worst movies I went to see. It's one of the worst movies ever yeah, produced. So just if it says 2006, just 1949. Okay. Uh, so what can someone like Lonesome Rose, the guy in in, in uh, uh, facing the crowd, tell us? Uh, what well, you know, Trump says. I could shoot some in the middle of Fifth Avenue, and it would be okay. Hmm? No, you know, I wouldn't. I wouldn't lose any any votes. Hmm. Uh, that was obviously exaggerated. Hmm. Uh, but not too much. Ro and Lonesome Rose, the whole country, like my flock of sheep. Uh, I can lead them wherever. Well, Trump, after a, a year and a half of campaigning, and after you know, 10 years of The Apprentice and, and whatever. I mean, what, what, what must he think of people? Not much. I can feed them whatever I want. Mm -hmm. I can tell them X on one day and Y the next, and it won't matter. It just <laughs> doesn't matter. Uh, they're more stupid than I am. So I got to think for them. Uh, I think, you know, no matter what Trump says, you know, how, how he honors working people, et cetera, uh, I think there's part of him and his staff is going, oh my God, these people are idiots. Uh, you know, Hillary calls them deplorables and then you know backs off a little bit. But but there's some folks there that are, you know are really problematic. And whether Trump is leading them or getting ahead of a of a parade uh, that they're already marching in, I, you know, I don't know. But uh, you're really talking about a, 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 an electorate that's simply not willing. Uh, to to take the process very 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 seriously, uh, and as Hillary pointed out, I mean, many of these people are really hurting. They they haven't done well over the last fifteen or twenty years. If you live in Southern Ohio, uh, Southern uh, Central Pennsylvania, uh, rural Virginia, on and on, West Virginia, you clearly have had huge economic uh, economic, economic problems. So one way to think about it is through in the theater is this, this through movies. Uh, there's another theatrical element here that I'd say is, is, is pretty important. Uh, and that's the, 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 the preachers, the Joel Osteens of the world, and many, oh. many others. Oh, you recognize him, yeah. Oh, Boy, just slimy. Okay. And, uh, you, know, you know, basically, that's Trump University. Get rich like me. <laughs> Joe Osteen has a jet, Trump has a jet. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, you, I'll lift you up, uh, but you're going to have to pay for it. Uh, and, and, and so, uh, there, I, I think there is a kind of re uh, religiosity here, uh, especially with his, you know, 35, 40 percent of the population, whatever it is that, that, that is, that is uh, uh, supporting him. So from, from that perspective, I, I do think that uh, it taps into uh, something that might appear to be religious, but isn't necessarily religious. Yeah, you could, you know, God, God wants you to be rich, uh, and on and on. Uh, uh, that's really not my, you know, my strong analytic point here, but I, but I think that I think the relationship is is is, is pretty powerful, and, and it's interesting when you when you go through Google Images. Uh, I was looking for Im images of, of, of various pastors who, you know, Kenneth Copeland's and all that stuff. Right. Uh, and there was this was this was one image, and I, I, okay, <laughs> I'm going with that one. Um, <laughs> now <laughs> we're lying. The, this whole truth thing, uh, at, you know, as as theater. Well, you know, when we write novels or construct plays, uh, basically authors lie. They want to try to make it look like the truth, but but 
but but uh, they are constructing uh, a, a narrative. They are constructing a, a, and uh, but there, there has to be some um, some verisimilitude. That you have to have a sense of you can, of believability. A lot of times, right now. Uh, Believability goes out the window. It just doesn't matter. Uh, and you say, uh, and, and Trump can say, ah, oh, you got, you know, Lion Ted Cruz, or you know, Lion Marco Rubio, or you know, of course Lion Hillary. Uh, and 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 yet here's the person. We can get into psychology briefly in a minute. But he was projecting on his opponents, but I mean, he's the most substantial liar of of, of everybody. In the, Pain. Um, Hillary has her problems with the truth without any question. Uh, but it's almost always at the edges. And she does you know, just say, geez, my doctor said I had pneumonia. Yeah, you know, boom. That's it. Two days later, well, she felt, you know, she, she was collapsing. Oh, by the way, she has pneumonia. Uh, you know, she didn't lie, but she lies by admission. Uh, it's, it, she's protective of herself, and we can say, "Oh, there's a lot of reasons for that," and fair enough, perhaps. But uh, you get to uh, uh, Hillary and the emails, and, and you just want to, you know, your head, you, you've got something that probably, probably doesn't add up to much of anything. Everyone who's I respect who's looked at it doesn't think it does. But here she is. They leak out. They. they Squibble them out, whatever, uh, and it is just a notion of of of, of uh, dissembling, uh, dishonesty, uh, uh, whatever. So, so Hillary contributes to that narrative uh, without uh, with, without any question. Objectively, if we look at something like Politifact, which I'm a big fan of, like I I know one of the guys who runs Politifact. They work like dogs to get things right. I mean, Trump. Most of what Trump says uh, is not true. <laughs> I mean, and most of what, and Hillary among all the candidates, uh, all the, in political life, Obama is has somewhat a little less, a little somewhat fewer uh, untruths than than, than 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 Hillary. But but beyond Obama, uh, Hillary Hillary is the, mo the most truthful candidate across all Republicans, all Democrats. Uh, and Trump is way at the other end. I mean, he, you know, by a level of magnitude, uh, yes, everyone else in you know, that Trump. Uh, it doesn't seem to matter very, 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 very much. As, as usual, uh, the president has some reasonably good things to say.